Hi, my name is Eric Sampson and I want to talk a little bit about how to do a forward step up for your knee. It's a great exercise to work on during your functional part of the recovery from any knee injuries such as meniscus injuries or tendonitis. Um, it's a great exercise because it's functional, meaning it kind of mimics what we're doing in everyday life, such as you know, the stairs and curbs and those kind of activities. Um, it can be worked on in the uh, clinic uh, by using a step. You can raise the step up and down with certain, uh, you know, certain equipment, but ultimately you're going to put a foot up on your step. So go ahead, put a foot up on the step. Good. And it's very easily done by coming up and down with your other foot. So the target muscle we're working on is your quadriceps on the leg that's on the step. So if you come up one more time and then come on back down. Now, it's an exercise that can be made much harder simply by, again, raising it up, but also by trying to work on not cheating with the foot that's on the floor behind you. We typically are going to push off that foot, the back foot, with the calf, and what she's doing now is trying to work on the same exercise where she's not using her calf muscle in the back to pop herself back up. All right. This puts all the force and all the target on your leg that's on the step, and specifically your quad. Uh, secondary muscles that are working during this exercise include your glutes, as well as your calf and your hamstring. Right? But it's a great exercise, again, because it's very functional. We can't really avoid stairs during our day-to-day, -day, uh, and we need to strengthen our muscles in a functional manner. Two to three sets of ten is wonderful, maybe on alternating days, um, and you can progress on a week-to-week -week basis to hand weights, and again, to making it more difficult with trying to get your toes off the floor in the back and using only your leg that's on the step. Uh, to pop up into the step. The sit to stand lifts are a great exercise in the clinic. Uh, they really mask the functional activity that we do all day long, um, sitting and standing uh, from our chairs in the office as well as home. And in the presence of knee pain, um, it really is a great exercise to work on because you're using the muscles in a very functional manner. It mimics the exact thing we're doing out in the open. Uh, and so I want to look at uh, a couple of ways to do a sit to stand exercise and how to progress it and how to make it more challenging. So with sitting to stand exercising, one of the keys is to start the, uh, the exercise at a level where the seat is pretty high up so it's a little less challenging on the patient. And what the uh, patient is usually asked to do is just basically as if they're getting up from a chair, uh, lean forward a few inches and then use your feet and prop all the way up into standing. All right. At this height of a, of a seat, it's probably a little easier for her to do. Come on back down. Right. So what you can work on is just simply either sitting in a lower seat or obviously adding some hand weights can make it a little bit harder. So when we see patients that are have knee pain, one of the great ways to make the exercise harder is simply making them use the knee that's hurting them a little bit more um, during the exercise. If you take a ball and put it underneath the foot of the unaffected side, it's going to make the patient use their injured side a little bit more when they're doing the exercise. So again, okay, why don't you lean forward, come all the way up into standing and then again back down. This makes the patient use the injured side a little bit more. It trains them to use it properly. Um, and then eventually after a week or two of exercising, they'll notice when they're at their office and getting up from a chair, it's a little bit easier and a little less painful. I recommend about two sets of 10 on the first go. And then as you're getting stronger, maybe go up to three sets of 10. And again, lowering the seat or lowering the chair you're using the uh, exercise for is another way to make it harder. Hi, my name is Eric Sampson and I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about how to do a very high level exercise called the heel raise squat. It's basically taking two exercises, two great exercises for your knees and combining it into one. And now obviously if it's your first time doing it or you're having some trouble with your knee, you might want to separate the two out for a week or so. But uh, by and large, if you want to combine them, it's great for strengthening as well as uh, improving your balance and your coordination. Uh, the reason why is because you're going, going into a squat and then immediately into a heel raise. So there's going to be a balance issue there as you're transitioning from one exercise to the other. So first with the squat, your knees uh, are, are such, your feet are shoulders width apart. And why don't you go ahead and do a squat for me. You're going to come down and then when you come up in one motion, go up on your toes. That's great. Come on back down again, all the way down, 
Good, and then coming right back up, all the way up on your toes. All right, again, you're working on your knee exercises here uh, with your quads and hamstrings, but then you're also tying in your calf muscle, uh, which is an important uh, knee exercise or knee muscle uh, for runners as well as your exercise population. Just do one more time, come down. The key with your squat is to make sure your knees don't come up over your toes, and then you're coming up from there into a total uh, heel raise. Two to three sets of 10 is probably ideal. Uh, come on back down. Two to three sets is fine, maybe for alternating days to, in the beginning, maybe progressing to some hand weights, uh, holding the poses a little bit longer and increasing your reps is certainly other ways to progress the exercise. But this is a heel raised squat, uh, a very high level exercise for your knee population. Hi, my name is Eric Sampson and I wanna talk a little bit about how to do a heel raise uh, on a step uh, doing it on a step is basically a progression from doing it from the floor and the reason why it is a progression is that when you're on the step you can actually go past the neutral it's called of the ankle and going into a little bit of dorsiflexion or flexion of the ankle which gives the calf muscle uh, a bigger line of pull and it's much more difficult to come back up and push off from uh, going past neutral into dorsiflexion. It's a progressive exercise and the calf muscle is very important to strengthen even for knee patients because the calf is a very large muscle group and it can help with absorption of uh, the force for the runners and the walkers out there that are maybe uh, exercising a lot and they're getting a lot of maybe tension in their knees. The stronger your calf muscles are, they can absorb some of that contact um, and it's just less stress on the knees. The other reason why you're doing your calf exercises is because the actual tendons of the calf do come up past your knee. So they're gonna come above your knee uh, and therefore they do have a major function on your knee. Um, so if you come up on the step, right, and again, if you have your heels hanging off the edge, all right, and then do a traditional calf raise, come on up. All right, that's the same whether you're on the floor or not, but when you come down, you can actually go past neutral, all right, and then you come back up again. Good, so this is a little more challenging than doing it from the floor. So the key part of the exercise is going to be the lowering uh, down past neutral. So if you come up first, all right, that's going to be the same whether you're on the floor or on a step. But when you come down, you can actually go past neutral into what's called dorsiflexion or ankle flexion. Uh, it provides a little bit more of a stretch for the calf muscle and it also makes the calf muscle have to work a little harder because you're going past neutral into a, a flex position. Come all the way up again and then back down. Good. So about two to three sets of 10 is a great way to start, maybe on alternating days. And then once you've progressed and gotten, gotten on with it, you might wanna add some hand weights to make it a little bit harder. Maybe hold yourself up a little bit longer or do more repetitions for progression. And this is a great exercise for both your ankle patients, but really for your knee patients as well. And it often gets overlooked in the rehab setting. Hi, my name is Eric Sampson and I wanna speak a few minutes about doing a side leg raise and why it is so important for not only your hip and your back but also for your knee. Uh, first of all, your knee, you have muscles on all four sides of your knee, so it's important to have a good balance of strength and flexibility on all four sides of your knee. Um, we typically are working on the front and back um, at the gym and also with our functional day, but we need to really concentrate on the inner and outer muscles and right now we'll talk about the outer. Um, the other reason why it's important is the stronger your hip and your gluteus muscles are, which is the muscle you'll be working on the exercise, it'll actually act as an absorber of your force as you're landing on the ground while running or doing stairs or even just simply walking. Basically, the stronger the hip area is, uh, the better uh, it'll take on some of the, the weight and some of the load and it's just a little less stress on your knee. The key to the exercise is the technique. Uh, I see it often done at the gym and in the clinic a little incorrectly. Uh, the problem is that the front of the thigh muscle, the, the quad muscle, is often a little bit stronger than the back, the hamstring. So as the patient lifts the leg up, the leg tends to come a little forward as a result. And that's what you have to be careful with. You want to be able to lift it straight up and see your foot going straight up. And the target muscle is going to be right here in your hip. The goal is to lift it about 12 to 18 inches off the ground or off your other leg and come right back down. All right. And as an exercise progression, you want to do it about two to three sets of 10 uh, on alternating days. Give yourself a little rest break in between. And as you're getting a little bit stronger, you can add some ankle weights, which is a very, very simple way to progress the exercise. So one more time, you're going to come straight up. You're going to make sure this is the muscle you're targeting and you're coming right back down.